people are going to say it was rigged. Hendrick Motorsports got the storybook victory for their storybook season. Just another chapter in the storybook. It was their 40th anniversary season. Not sure if the broadcast mentioned that. But William Byron goes to victory lane at Martinsville, a track that has given that team the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Of course, it is their 29th victory at the famed short track in Virginia. William Byron's second victory there. And not only did he win on the 40th anniversary of their first win back in 1984 with Jeff Bodine, he also led home a 1-2-3 finish. William Byron, Kyle Larson, Chase Elliott, and Alex Bowman came home in eighth. An absolute storybook day on their 40th anniversary. Not sure if they mentioned that enough. 1,500 employees sitting outside of turn two in a hospitality area. It was the best ending they could have possibly asked for. They led 238 of the 400 laps on Sunday, and they short pitted and did the undercut. Not really short pitted. They undercut the 11 car of Denny Hamlin, and it worked out perfectly. William Byron was able to get around the nine car of Chase Elliott, and he was able to drive off and hold off everybody else to victory. Of course, there's going to be the tinfoil hat brigade, the people that are out there saying that it's rigged. Let me put it back on real quick so I can get really into my conspiracy mind here. They're going to say it was rigged, that it was always going to be for Hendrick. Of course, NASCAR let them get away with stuff like they're in the championship four back in the Gen 6 car era, that they were always going to win. They were always going to win because they put so much emphasis on this race. Of course, does it work out really well? Is it very convenient for them to win in their 40th anniversary season? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, this company has historically been the best company team at Martinsville. So it's not a shock there. But of course, you're going to have the people that say NASCAR rigged this for them. Although I don't know how you're going to do that for a long green flag run other than letting them have more horsepower, letting them have a better setup, letting them run track control, whatever crazy cockinany idea that the Facebook comments will come up with. And I'm sure there's going to be great ones and I cannot wait to read them. But of course, a green white checker there at the end with the 42 car blowing a rotor certainly didn't help the uh, this race is fixed crowd because if it was fixed, you wouldn't have done that because that did not ensure a one, two, three finish and certainly could have made things a bit more hairy. Kind of think back to the um, the Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer incident that Mike Joy mentioned, but conveniently left out the Clint Boyer spot where they were going for the 200th victory for Hendrick Motorsports and Clint went in there and dive bombed them. Granted, he did have the inside right there, but you kind of had to know what was going to happen going into that corner. I just thought it was funny on the broadcast that they just didn't even mention the fact that Clint was involved with that incident. I should probably take this off because I look ridiculous. So when it came down to it, you had that opportunity to happen at the end of the race, and it didn't happen because, well, the Gen 7 car is really, really hard to spend somebody out on. Like, you have to just straight up hook them Carson Hosevar style if you want to get somebody out of the way. You can run into them, but you got to hit them pretty hard. So William Byron manages to ace the restart, didn't jump it this week. There was a lot of talk about jumping, and the broadcast flippantly dismissed it as well, once again. But he clearly jumped. Last week, Denny Hamlin. This week, William Byron did not jump. No controversy there. They end up winning the race. One, two, three finish for, for them. There was a three-car accident uh, coming to the white flag, or right after the leaders took the white flag. That just never got shown on the broadcast. Apparently, the 99 of Suarez spun, and maybe the two of Austin Center. It doesn't really, like, that was really bad. They had somehow managed to not show any of that, but they did get Rick Hendrick on the phone, which sounded like it was also from 1984 on the post race. So it was a 40th anniversary season. Did I mention that yet? Um, I'm not sure people knew that. They get another storybook victory in their season so far. Four victories for the for Hendrick Motorsports uh, this season. Uh, Chase Elliott finishes uh, third, back to back top fives for the first time since last season when he finished uh, with three straight top fives in a row, but his last back-to-back -to -back top fives were Nashville into the Chicago street race. So they now have four victories through the first eight races. That's half for people keeping score at home. That's pretty good by all accounts. William Byron now has three wins in the first eight races. He's solidified himself as the number one Hendrick this season so far. Kyle Larson, number two. And then Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman continue to try to duke it out for the number three spot there. But for Chase, back-to-back -back top fives is great. Uh, obviously, leading 64 laps is great for him. Chase back, eh, not sure yet. At least he didn't get out and say he hated it for his guys. So that's a step in the right direction in terms of positive momentum. Outside of that, you had Denny Hamlin probably had the second or fourth best car, rather, of the day. Uh, those 300 cars at the end were certainly untouchable. Bubba Wallace ran really well all day. Definitely got a jab in at Clint Boyer at the end of the race in his post-race interview, which I like where he said, put some respect on my name. I'm fine with uh, drivers calling 
calling out announcers every now and then. Tony Stewart used to do it as well, which was always hilarious and awkward for the uh, person interviewing him there. Uh, so he gets that. Joey Logano led 84 laps after staying out on left side tires that lasted 175 laps or whatever it ended up being. An absolutely bonkers length of time for those tires to last and not ideal. The tire laid rubber. We cannot complain about that. Tire laid rubber. They You did have passing today. Obviously, William Byron started 18th, ends up winning the race. So there were cars out there that were able to pass. Tyler Reddick, 19th. He finishes 7th. Ryan Priest, 22nd, finishes 9th. So great for him. Cars were able to pass. Cannot complain about that this week for, for once. But for Hendrick Motorsports, like I said, a storybook victory and a storybook season for them. Uh, all in all, five cautions for 51 laps, 400 lap race, five, 51 laps is a lot of laps. At the end of the race there with with um, the 42 car on pit road, obviously blew a breaker and then they was leaking a ton of fluid, also caught on fire and was on fire for way longer than it should have been behind the wall before somebody finally came over and sprayed it. Looked like one of their crew members was like, how do you miss a car being on fire? They put down a beach worth of speedy dry in the 42's pit box if the 48 of alex bowman wanted to pit he is going to have to drive through it like it was the beaches of normandy there's just no way around it at like daytona when they open it up for the trucks and those dummies go down there and park and get stuck in the sand that's what bowman was going to have to drive through i've never seen that much speedy dry in one spot somebody said hey clean this up and then somebody proceeded to dump 500 pounds of speedy dry on the track or on in the pit box at least that was you don't need that much it's like uh, drugs. A dab will do you. You don't. It's not weight dependent. You see a little bit on the ground. You just throw some Speedy Dry out. Get a scoop of it out of the out of the. Well, we have a fifty-five gallon drum, and then you just throw it on the garage floor, and it dries up. It's not that difficult. But man, they went out there and they just ripped all the bags open and just dumped them out. How big's the spot? Twelve inches. Whole bag. What? That was a little bit excessive. Other than that. This race was better than some of the other Martinsville races. 13 lead changes. We had green flag pit stops as well. Uh, 2,129 green flag passes. We have to go back to the spring race last year because last year's fall race, of course, is 500 laps. So that's going to skew things. Oh, it had more green flag passes this year by about 100 over last year's 2,026. So, yeah, all in all, decent day, decent race, uh, not a banger by any means. Probably like a solid 78. It was passing. It was acceptable. C's get degrees. Winning this race gets you in the playoffs, and right now William Byron sitting nice and pretty in the playoffs. Points leader as well. He wins Hendrick Motorsports 40th anniversary season. Not sure if we mentioned that. They get another win. 29 victories at this track. Uh, like I said, highest of highs. Uh, winning races here, sending Jeff Gordon to the championship round. Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, both of them have nine grandfather clocks. Dale Jr.'s won here. All four Hendrick drivers have won here. And then, of course, the lowest of lows, the plane crash, everything that went along with that. Martinsville is just always going to be etched in Hendrick Motorsports history. It's not a shock that they won this race. Uh, I think a lot of us expected the Toyotas to be a lot better than they were today. Their short track package seemed really good. They were unstoppable at Phoenix. They were really good at Richmond, especially in clean air. Kyle Larson got closer. At Martinsville, it looked like Denny Hamlin had a shot at it. It looked like he had a really good opportunity to run with those guys. Ultimately, at the end of the day, those 300 cars just flexed their power, and they had more than anybody else. You did get uh, the Toyotas of Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick. Finishing in the top 10, Denny Hamlin comes home 11th, Eric Jones 12th for them. Uh, Denny pitted there at the end because the Hendrick cars didn't pit. They said if they stay out, you pit. He pitted and ultimately ended up biting him because not enough people uh, pitted as well or else he likely would have ended up 4th or 5th on that final restart. So they had speed. Just not what I think we expected out of them. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this race, what you thought about Hendrick picking up another victory at Martinsville. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.